All right, guys, what's going on today? We're talking all about tactical games. My first event's gonna be in the middle of this month. I'm super excited for it, and I've had a lot of people reach out about what is the tactical games? You know, what gear am I running, this side or the other? I'm a green pea when it comes to action shooting. It's very new to me. Um, as you guys know, I love fitness, I love staying in shape, so that's more uh, my bread and butter. So learning the shooting portion of it has been fun, challenging, and rewarding as well too. But I really wanted to make this again, just to do like a super simple breakdown of the gear that I'm running, why I'm running it, the vision I'm competing in and all that good stuff. So let's get into it guys. I'm really excited to run y'all through this and show you about what the tactical games is and what gear you need to go ahead and get yourself ready to start competing. All right guys, so we're gonna talk plate carriers first. All right, so there's a couple things that you wanna look for when buying a plate carrier. Uh, number one is gonna be durability. So you're gonna be beating this thing up. You're gonna be crawling, sweating, uh, shooting in it. I mean, you're gonna be getting a whole bunch of stuff all over it. So you wanna make sure that this thing is gonna hold up and it's gonna meet the demands that you're gonna to need to put on it over a weekend of competition. Uh, number two is gonna be the profile of it. So I personally like something that's a slimmer weight vest. As you can see, without the plates in this, it's very slim. My plates are also not thick at all. Um, this is another thing, we'll get into those in a second. But uh, so profile is gonna be number two for me. Make sure it's slim. You're gonna be doing things like cleans, uh, you're gonna be picking things up and down all weekend. You're gonna be doing pull, you could be doing pull-ups, whatever it is. The thicker that your plate carrier is, the more cumbersome it's gonna be. I've seen people go ahead and clean stuff, hit the bottom of their vest and it goes right up into their chin. It's not fun. So make sure you get something that's a slim profile um, that's gonna be ergonomic and it's gonna move up with you. That leads me into number three, the ergonomics of the plate as well too, or the plate carrier as well too is gonna be important. So does this restrict my movement? Does this feel uncomfortable? Uh, does it like chafe or ride up on anywhere that makes you feel uncomfortable? You wanna make sure you vet all that before getting out in a week and competing in this because you're gonna be living in this and you're gonna be having a hell of a bad time if you get one that's uncomfortable and it starts to chafe or ride up in certain places that are uncomfortable. So those would be my top three things to look for when getting a uh, plate carrier. So durability, profile, and then also ergonomics of it. So that leads us into our next thing is the actual plates themselves. Um, I run plates from a company called Jack Rabbit Plates. These are awesome. These are filled with sand and I'm gonna do a full review on these to really break these down, but they're really ergonomic and they're pliable. So I noticed when we would vet stages and we would be running practice and just really just going through all the different movements that you go through with regular plates, they get super cumbersome, especially when your heart rate's up, you're doing anything like heavy stress carries or you're shooting prone, things like that. Those regular metal plates tend to really be uncomfortable. So I like the Jackrabbit plates. They breathe with you really well um, and they're not gonna break the bank really. So I think these are a great option to pair with a really solid plate carrier. So that's what I'm running. Um, as far as weights go for men, you have to have them at 15 pounds. Women have to be at 12 pounds. So just make sure you wait before you got that all dialed in and ready to go. You don't wanna have to play around with that on check-in. So it's the last thing you wanna really deal with. Um, so that's everything with plate carrier here. If I miss anything, by all means hit me up, let me know if you have any other questions about them. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into pistol, belt, and mag retention. First up, um, I'm gonna go into the pistol. I'm running a Staccato P. I'm competing in what's called the tactical division. So you have a tactical division, you have the intermediate, and then you have the elite. Tactical kind of sits in the middle there. Um, you can use different optics on the pistol there, and that's more for like law enforcement, military guys who want to run the same stuff they run in the field, but also for people who kind of want a little bit more of a challenge from the intermediate, but not quite ready for elite yet, which is where I'm at. Fitness wise, I feel like I'm there, but with my shooting, I'm really still kind of far behind. So I want to make sure I get some more practice under my belt. So that's why we're going with the tactical division. Um, so again, shooting a staccato P. Uh, I've got the hollow sun red dot on here. And then you also have a rail attachment, which is gonna be for the holster here. So you need to have a, what's called a level two holster, uh, which just gives you added retention for it. So what you gotta do is press the thumb release here and the pistol slides out. And that's all connected to the rail system on the bottom of the barrel here. You just gotta connect that and then it goes right into the holster. Super simple, easy, and you're ready to go. So um, this again comes from Blackhawk. All you gotta do is connect the hip belt attachment and then you can adjust the thumb pad depending on how low or high profile you want it. Um, so you've got that set right there. Um, so again, we're going staccato P with a hollow and red dot. We've got the Black Hawk, it's called their Omnivore holster. Uh, and then we'll go into the belt system now. So the belt system is gonna be comprised of a couple of different pieces. So first you're gonna have what's called your inner belt. 
This is gonna go through your belt loops. This is gonna be what's attached directly to your pants there. This has got the soft part of the Velcro on there. So once that's on, that's attached, you're gonna have your outer belt here, which is gonna be the rough part of the Velcro. And all this does is you just go around the waist. You don't put it through the actual belt loops and then it's gonna sit on that Velcro there. So main reason why you want a Velcro style belt system is it's not gonna move around as you're running around and going through your stages and competing. Again, the inner belt is gonna be from uh, Ferro Concepts and it's, this is called their Bison inner belt. I think this was like 30 or $40. This belt is from a company called Javelin and you can buy this on their website there. Uh, the website is, or the, the company is J-A-V-L-I-N. I'll put the links to all these below as well too, so you guys have them. Um, as far as pistol and rifle mags are concerned, you wanna have four of each minimum. So a lot of the competitions that you're gonna be shooting, we're gonna have loadouts of four pistol and four rifle. So you want at least four magazines. I would suggest five or six in case you lose them. We get a lot of people that leave and lose magazines. Uh, all over the place. So make sure that you have extras with you. Um, as far as retention goes, it's up to you what kind of like magazine retention you wanna have. I use G-Code. So those you can just attach right to the belt loops here. What you do is you'll attach a clip to the back end here. You can cant it, you can put it straight up, just really however you prefer to do it. These are gonna be for your rifle. Uh, and then you'll attach them on the belt as needed. So I've got three here, um, I will end up putting three more for my rifle. And then I have a dump pouch on the back here. Dump pouches from Kafaru. This is just for used magazines, um, just whatever I wanna throw in the back here. Um, it's just, I like to have it on there. And then we've got our protection. So we've got iPro, um, I just use sunglasses. These are from Magpul. They make a bunch of different sunglasses. They're rated for shooting firearms. That's what they're known for, is they make a bunch of great firearms accessories. And I've also got EarPro as well too here. These are walkers. These things are awesome because they actually have a microphone in them. You can adjust the setting high or low. And with that, you can hear people talking to you, um, but any loud noises like firearms going off, it negates that sound coming into the speaker. So you can hear people talk um, without having to be, um, you know, like blocked off by using like earplugs or something like that. So that's a big plus to be able to have those. I love those for EarPro. That's my setup right now. So I have the uh, Bison inner belt from Ferro Concepts. I have the outer belt from Javelin. All the mag retention is gonna be from G-Code. The dump pouch on the back is gonna be from Kifaru. The pistol, again, is gonna be a staccato P with a hollow sun red dot. And then the eye pro is gonna be Magpul. The ear pro are gonna be walkers. So that's the setup that I have, not including the vest itself, which we went over as well too, which was from GORUCK and the plates from uh, Jacked Rabbit plates. Uh, I'll, pull the, I'll pull the rifle out real quick, go over the rifle, and then that'll get us our full breakdown for anything here for uh, my first competition. All right, guys, so last up we have is the rifle, and I don't think I went over this earlier, but as far as calibers go, there are restricted calibers. You'll wanna go on the websites for all the particulars. Again, this is just kind of like a brief overview of like the basic gear that you need. But um, as far as rifle, most people shoot 223, and then for pistol, it's gonna be nine millimeters. So that's what we have here is a 223. Uh, caliber rifle. This is from Sons of Liberty Gunworks with a Vortex Razor HD LPVO. So LPVO is a limited power variable optics uh, scope. So you will want to have one of these on as you're going to be shooting out to maximum distances of upwards close to 500 yards sometimes. Um, I think the furthest that we've done since I've been with the company is like 450. So you definitely want to have uh, an LPVO on your rifle so you can shoot that distance. So aside from the scope on the rifle, um, you'll also want to make sure you get a sling which you can attach, you know, however you'd like to, to your rifle. Uh, I know Magpul makes a really good sling. And then they also do like a quick detachment, which you can get a piece that goes just to the side of the, uh, the barrel here. So you can get that to where it quickly comes on and off if you don't want it for certain events, but you will need it, um, especially sometimes on the long runs, we have you guys run with rifles slung. So um, you need to have that on there as well too. But that's really the only the other attachment I can think of off the top of my head, uh, but this is gonna be what we're running for the first competition. So super excited um, to be able to utilize this. Suns make some great firearms uh, along with Staccato as well too. So um, it's gonna be a fun competition. I'm super excited. 
I hope this was helpful for you guys. If there's anything that I missed that you guys still have questions about, by all means, reach out and uh, I'll get you guys squared away or at least get you on the right path to help figuring that out. I'll leave a link or I'll leave all the links to all the gear that I have on here so that way you guys can go check it out for yourself and uh, you know hopefully you guys can get your kit started out and get yourself practicing for uh, all fitness related training stuff like that check out TTG training on Instagram that's going to be where we post everything and anything that has to do with tactical games training get signed up for that get yourself training because it is different style than what you're used to and uh, it's going to be super beneficial for you to be able to utilize that plus you can get access to dry firing drills live firing drills for your firearms training as well it encompasses everything so that'll be extremely beneficial for you guys give you a good leg up um, aside from that we're starting our skirmishes again for the tactical games which will be held in austin next week and then we have some more coming out through the season again we'll also leave link options as well too in the bio so you can check that out and see where those are at um, and then we've got about five more events for the season so hopefully you guys get enough training in you guys can get one under your belt this year and get a competition in it's a lot of fun it's a great community of people so as always guys here to help out with anything that you need feel free to reach out have a good one